It's the next level. I was promised peace and salvation. Instead, I get a girl. I understand this is not the desired outcome, but I can be more than a human pincushion. The SSR is under my command now. Be grateful you're in the room and not being brought up on charges of insubordination. We were about to lose the entire project. If I hadn't stepped well, in... Well, we did. Every last drop of that Dr. Erskine serum went into you. And if we get lucky, someday your blood might tell us how to make a real super soldier. You have a super soldier. Women aren't soldiers. And they sure as hell don't fight on the front lines. They might break a nail. Panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is a spoiler full podcast about the first episode of Marvel's Disney's What If series. An animated show, too. Mind you, this is the first animated thing that we've covered since Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. Yeah, we did Invincible. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is true. Okay. I, I was thinking the same thing at first, and I was wait a minute. No, we did Invincible. That yeah, was, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're that right. Was just, that was just an adult cartoon, adult you know animation. Yeah. Well, this is semi. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's got okay. it's got some violence in it. You know, it I does. think it's yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, with that, we're going to be covering What If on Disney Plus and Captain Carter, or What If Captain Carter were the first Avenger. So the synopsis, Steve, what is it? So the synopsis is very simple. Just what would have happened if Peggy Carter and not Steve Rogers took the super soldier serum at the start of World War II. That's a lot of S's. (laughs) (laughs) But I got it. It was a little fast, but I got got it. You got it. Yeah. Yeah, that that is pretty cool, too. Uh, We're going to move right along right into our initial thoughts. So, Steve, what were your thoughts? I, I loved it. I mean, I thought it was a great first episode. I, I enjoyed it. I The animation was really clever, I thought. I'm not huge on animated series, so it, it's kind of like I, I wasn't sure at first, but I, I really liked the style. And so I don't know if they're going to keep the same style throughout or if they're going to change them up as they go. From the trailers, it looks like it's going to be pretty similar style of animation if I if I watch the trailers correctly. Uh, and I just, you know, I was a huge fan of the What If comics when I was a kid and I unfortunately didn't keep any of them oh, around. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think so anyway. I, I, I kept a very low amount of my comics when I, when I joined the air force. So yeah, I've got, I, I've got a few that are still in boxes and bagged and stuff from 20, 30. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 20 years That's ago, probably 30 years. No, 30 years ago. 30 now, years 19, ago. Oh, wow. 1989, <laughs> man. So, yeah, well, w- with me, I was I thought it was very impressive for the first episode for the series. I just love the animation, just like you did, and it looks to me like they're going to keep up with that continuity with the based on how they're going to do the uh, the animation for the film or the shows, and I really enjoy that. I have a bunch of what if comics from the late seventies and er- and into the eighties as well. Myself. Oh, very cool. I, I came into them. I, I have to go through some comics because I have to purge a bunch. Now, I'm sure a lot of the comic book purists out there are going, do not purge, do not sell. But you know. I was going to say those, you know, those should be starting to, you know, 40 years. I have value. It's- yeah. yeah, they should be starting to have value, I would think. Yeah. And I think the last time I looked it up, the, they were they were averaging like 40 to 50 years, unless it's something that was super limited. Um, you know, it's it's forty to fifty years is kind of the shelf life of when you can start. Really, I have a bunch which I really do enjoy, so I'm going to keep those. Yeah, I've always enjoyed the stories that could have been within those comics. So, but in time, Marvel Comics did, however, use a few of those stories for future comics. So, a lot of those stories are not really what if. They're really more continuity within the Marvel comic universe itself, too. Because they implemented those stories within the uh, multiverse at a certain point later on in years. So, I I thought that was pretty cool. But 
whether or not they do that within the MCU, that would be amazing. Or if they actually do, and I think there's a second season going on for this particular show. Too. That's that's what TV podcast industry said that it's been. I, I haven't seen an official announcement. Me but they neither. Said it, so. Yeah, but I'm hoping so too. And I, I would I would love to see that. I also love the fact that we got uh, Dominic Cooper back as Stark, mm-hmm. Ross Marquand as Red Skull, Haley Atwell as Peggy Carter, Chris Evans back as Steve Rogers, Sebastian Stan as Bucky. And everyone else that they can get back to voice the episode. Yeah. Was that Chris Evans? I'm not I didn't see Yeah, his his name was put posted. Okay. Yeah. So I, I thought it was really cool that they uh got all the physical actors to come back to voice their own characters, which was amazing. And it really made my day when I watched it for the first time. Very cool. Yeah. So I'm hoping you guys that are listening enjoyed the show. We did. But now what we're going to do is go into our top fives or our highlights of what if Captain Carter were the first Avenger? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, ha! please put down the sword. Uh, sir? That's Captain Carter. Where's Steve Rogers? The war ended almost 70 years ago. Uh, you want me to start? Sure. Okay, so my number five is just that the whole beginning narration we have from Jeffrey White. Jeffrey Wright, uh, his his voice is just so amazing. It's so distinct. Wonderful. Yeah, and it's so wonderful for this role. And I love, you know, I, I, I'm sure that that opening narration is probably going to be on every episode. But then when he, he goes in, when the episode starts, he gives us just enough to where even if you aren't a a fan of the Marvel Universe, you can tell what's going on. And, and you can go, oh, okay, I know who Captain America is. I mean, most people do. So I think I think he gives he's going to give us just enough information to where we don't necessarily have to have known everything about the story, or at least I hope that's what it's going to be. Because I know I am my knowledge of the MCU. I I, I, sh- I shudder to say is not great. So well, honestly, you watched Captain America: The First Avenger, so mm-hmm. you know about the whole story. So this is kind of like a flip flop mm-hmm. on that oh, particular yeah. story itself. So. That was pretty cool. So, uh, in my opinion, I really enjoyed that for that fact. So, my number five, well, that would be the concept of Peggy taking over as the Captain America. You know, uh, you know, she had to force herself into it. I, did, I really enjoyed the thought. And she and Steve were pretty much cut from the same cloth, in my opinion. But the coolest is that she is more impulsive than Steve is, if you think about it. She just does and defies orders because they say she can't be <laughs> because she's a woman. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was, that was a great, that was a, it was a great concept because to ease us kind of into the concept yeah. of what if, because they're really, like you said, they're, they're very, their inner strength is, is very much, it's just, she was one of those people that she had a outer beauty as well. Yeah. And but Steve, you, you saw that inner impulsiveness too. Oh it, no! Yeah, no, I'm totally agreeing with you. I'm just, I'm yeah, just saying yeah. That- I'm, I'm saying too to reflect on, like, let's say Captain America: The First Avenger, when mm-hmm. he picks up the shield, he goes, "It works, right?" And she picks up a gun and starts shooting at it, and and Stark's like backing away. Howard's <laughs> like, ah, and bang, 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 bang. That's how impulsive she is. So uh, I think we start to see that more so within the actual this episode, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, so for me, number the number my number four is the moment that changed everything, and this is what had me after I watched Captain America: The First Avenger, after watching the first episode of What If. What bothered me was the mo- the moment that he that the Watcher says this is the moment that changed everything. It was when she decided not to go to the observation deck, mm. and after listening to TV podcast industries talk about it, I kind of realized I was really just kind of overthinking it because. What I was stuck on was I was like, why would – because in the movie, you know, she says, yeah, I'll go up there. And then you see her and a bunch of other people, including the saboteur, go up to the observation deck. Yeah. And in – but in the what if timeline, she says, no, I'll stay here. And nobody else goes up to the observation deck either. So it's kind of like they all kind of took their cue from her. Yeah. Even even the saboteur that, oh, well, if she's going to stay, then the rest of us are going to stay. 
And that kind of bugged me a little bit because I was like, uh, would that really happen that way? Well, it also makes you think, too, why wasn't Peggy killed because the saboteur went into the observation deck in the first movie as well? Right. You know? Well, no, because because his bomb, the bomb didn't go off until they all had exited the observation deck. Yes. And because it was after the procedure. So th this is what, but like I said, this is what bugged me, but I really was just overthinking it was, was I was like, why would the saboteur change his plan? Why would, why would he put his bomb in a different place? Why would nobody go up to the, it was just, I was just like, duh, 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 in my head was just, <laughs> and it was just, I realized. Too many I was questions. Just overthinking. Yeah. I was just overthinking <laughs> it and she just, just go with it. You know, Hey, her decision not to go to the other stage deck changed everything. It changed what the saboteur did. Everything after she makes that declaration. Yeah changed what happened to where the saboteur blows up his explosive before the procedure is complete. He tries to steal the vials, but is unsuccessful. Whereas in the movie, he does it after the procedure and is successful. He actually gets out with it, but of course it smashes on the pavement, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but, but so yeah, it just really, it was, it was just a point for me that it bugged me for a while. And then I got calmed down when I listened to a TV podcast industry. And then you watched kind of, it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I watched it, watched it again. And I was like, okay, yeah, it's just, it, it just is what it is. So, well, well Derek and his friends always get it first too. So they are uh, yeah. ahead of time of us. So, which yeah, is pretty they cool. Were a little, yeah. They were a little ahead on us. They got, They're a little they ahead of us three. on, on yeah. us, but we do appreciate them. We love them and what they do. But yeah, I listened to it too, and a lot of my stuff as I was thinking, as I was watching the film too, or the show, I, I felt the same way. So I, I I was like keying in and cluing in too as I was listening to after I first watched it. And I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, same thoughts. Wow, same thoughts. Okay. <laughs> and then I moved on. <laughs> it's like, I all have different thoughts though on myself too. That would lead me to what, my number four? Your number four, yep. All right, that I I like the idea of a Hydra Smasher that Steve got to use. Um, something that stomper. Ha, stomper, okay, the Hydra Stomper, as it were. I I said Smasher. Yeah. But the funny thing is, is to me, I I really enjoyed it for the fact that it's like Tony didn't create this. Howard created this out of the Tesseract, and. Now, that kind of eliminates Tony at this point, unless they come to another timeline within this where Tony elaborates on this and creates something and within that particular multiverse or that world. We only see, uh, what is it, Fury and Hawkeye at the very end. Mm -hmm. And they uh, accept her and blah, blah, blah. And next thing you know, boom, she's back into this world kind of like Steve. But... Mm -hmm. The thing is, is that I'm thinking it would be different if they made the story similar to Captain America First Avenger, if they did that, you know, if they literally just made Steve a sideline character, kind of like Peggy was, if he didn't have the uh, Hydra stomper and all he was, was the romantic, like love interest or whatever it is for the, the show itself. I think it would have been uh, a retelling of the story, but in Peggy's shoes, if that were the case. I, I see what you mean. Yeah, it's very interesting if they had done it that way. So it was a different story instead of Steve getting the super soldier serum. Peggy got it. And then, you know, Steve was always there, but they always had that love. Mm -hmm. But Steve was always there to back her up. But the thing is, is that they put this Hydra stomper in there. Just to put Steve into the uh, the story. What if that was out of the play? What if Steve was not part of that in right, any no, way? I, yeah, that's a really yeah. good thought. That would have been – it would have been a, a, definitely a different story. It would have been more similar to the movie, mm -hmm. I think, because like you said, Peggy in the movie, she doesn't go with them on the missions. She doesn't do those kind of things. So, yeah, I get that would have been – it would definitely have been – I almost wonder, though, if they had done that, because this was actually my number two, so I'm going to speak on it now, All right. that I love that Stark made that suit for Steve and made it out of the Tesseract. I love its similarities to Iron Man. Yeah. But I, I, I just – I love the fact that we we got to see Steve be a hero, and I they still had some of the same story beats from the movie that they yes, got they to did. share from opposite sides 
in. Mm-hmm. But I, I see I see your point. It would have been an interesting way of telling it if they did give him more of the actual Peggy Carter role from the movie and gave her the Captain America role from the movie. Yeah. That, it, that would have been a different what if, I think. So Yeah, yeah. Big difference. Yeah. But that's I, I yeah, I that's that's really good. I like that. And I, I like that the other the other little slight change they made, this was kind of goes along with, with Tony making the the Iron Man type suit for the mm-hmm. Hydra Stomper was the little things that changed because Peggy got the serum. Like the fact that she didn't go on that USO tour. Tour. Yeah. Uh, You know, she... But they they had a costume ready for her. They had a costume, yeah, ready for her that then Stark upgraded and just and just gives to her and says well here's the here's what you were going to wear if you had done the tour but i've upgraded it and here's here's a real shield yeah. you know so she, so it wasn't it, so it's a very different way of telling that story because in you know in the movie steve had to improvise all that stuff he had to grab that chorus girl's helmet that had the mm-hmm. a on it he and, and he had to find it just find a shield uh, to use well, yeah, he was struggling, and he finds this shield that Howard just tossed away, mm-hmm. and that that's in my notes. But I'm going to use it now. But you know, Howard had tossed that away, saying, "Oh mm-hmm. no, 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 no! It's it's made of vibranium and blah blah blah." And then out of the blue, he just it's like he they're at the bar, and Peggy doesn't really drink, but he slams that shield down, and boom, yeah. she has a shield, right? And it's got you know a British flag on it <laughs> yeah, but yeah and, yeah and it which makes me laugh too because if you think about it they couldn't call her captain america because she's british oh uh, well yeah that's why they called her captain carter right but that's and that makes a lot more sense plus if they called her captain britain forget it that ruins kevin feige's thought of hey let's bring in captain britain from the comics into the mcu so they couldn't really do that right now but it, yeah. it, it works nonetheless, and it, and it worked for the story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that brings us to your number three. My number three. Well, my number three, would, well, the different scene with the train in Berlin, was it? Uh, yes. Yeah, the same. Yes, the similar. It was very that. similar. Go, go ahead, yeah, go ahead and say your thing, because this is in my notes as well. But go ahead. Yeah, Steve is there with Hydra, uh, the Hydra stomper, as it were, and slowing down the train to, to some degree before he breaks in. You know, you could see him. He's pushing at the very front, and then he mm-hmm. moves in, and, you know, he sees the bombs. But then Bucky falls off the train, and Peggy grabs him by his left arm and brings him back up on the train itself. Which is different from what happened within the original movie from Captain America, Mm -hmm. the first Avenger. And he makes that comment about her almost pulling off his arm or something like that. (laughs) And I thought that was pretty cool. It was a good callback and Easter egg to that point, which is making it look like that, oh, Bucky doesn't die in this. And then they kind of do a fake die with Steve while he's in the Hydra stomper. And even Stark says it at the end, I told you it was impenetrable. <laughs> and then, you know, and Steve's still alive and helps out the crew and everything. But the funny thing is, is that, you know, it's kind of a good twist of events that I really enjoyed. But Steve had to play the Bucky part. But in this case, it's not years ahead. It's only literally moments ahead mm-hmm. that we get him come back. And I thought that was very interesting. And the fact that we also get the fact that when Peggy co- does come back to modern times, she realizes that everybody has already passed. Mm-hmm. But I'm wondering if they do this what if part two or season two or whatever it is, if they actually bring Steve back as an old man, just like she was throughout the MCU. Mm-hmm. And they have that little story there. That would be amazing because I would love to have a spinoff story of a what if like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my, my, my note on this was, I love that when she says the name of the operation, she says it's where name of the operations, where Eagles dare, which yes. is also, it's also a movie that was written by Alistair McLean, who was mm-hmm. uh, also a book that he wrote. And my dad, uh, before he passed away, my dad, well, for his whole life was a huge fan of Alistair McLean. I remember reading Alistair McLean books with him, him mm-hmm. reading and, and us having that to, to be able to talk about. So as soon as I heard that reference, that just got me very nostalgic about my dad. So Same really, here too. It was really yeah. cool to, to see that. So, yeah. And also Iron Maiden actually has a song called 
where Eagles Dare, based upon the movie and the book. Nice. So, yeah, so it's pretty cool. As soon as I heard that, I'm like, oh my god. All I could hear is the drum roll from Nico McBrain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Yeah, and that was the first thing I thought. And I just loved the idea. And that was a really great title, too, for the mm-hmm. the, the project. Yeah. So my, I guess it brings us to my number two, kind of. And we've talked a lot about my stuff already, but let me see. Uh, I just... <sighs> I love the callbacks that we had to some of the other movies. The episode, the the moment of her punching the the punching bag, you oh, know, yeah. similar to what we got Steve in mm-hmm. um, event, which which it was Avengers or one of the movies was where, with him doing the punching bag and, and punching yes. it off the thing. Mm-hmm. But then you know they add to it with her throwing the the weights against the wall and into the wall. That was great. Mm-hmm. I love that when she rescues the 107th, we get a very similar, almost shot for shot after she rescues them of Steve. She breaks down that door, you know, like in the movie, Steve is leading with shooting his gun and she's doing the same, the same thing. I just love that. Those little things that they did that were callbacks to the movies and moments and, and especially from just the Captain America series was really great. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And kudos to the artist, though, mm-hmm. too, for that particular scene when she kicks up. I forget what she kicked up. Was the, it a the weight? weight? The weight. Yeah, yeah. It, was the, it was that weight. She kicks it up just like uh, Cap does with the shield. So it's really cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, with that, it's kind of reminiscent. But the funny thing is, is feet. They actually depicted feet properly. Unfortunately, Rob Liefeld, or Liefeld, who... Um, is a comic artist has been noted in years and all these years and everybody makes fun of it has never been able to depict feet properly within comics. So he tries to avoid it. So I think he cuts it out, but uh, I thought it was great that uh, we saw that and it was pretty cool. I really enjoyed it. And that scene was really cool and very reminiscent of what we saw before. Mm -hmm. And like you, I I did uh, take that as like, Oh, okay. That happened in this particular movie, too, as well. I really enjoyed it. So we're at your number two. My number two. All right. Well, Peggy's first experience with the shield on a mission. And she says, where have you been all my life? (laughs) And I just love that quote to the shield itself, which is so funny. So I just love how she took out all the Nazis within the scene. The one that attacks her in the end. A little pompous, but there was no blood. Within this mm-hmm. episode, if you think about it, yeah, so, we didn't see even when even when Red Skull gets gets squished, but <laughs> exactly. So it, it was a little tamed, but I'm okay with that. I really enjoyed it, nonetheless, because you would think it's animated, and a lot of families out there want to watch it together, and you don't want little kids seeing that. Mm-hmm. So even when she broke the guy's leg, you didn't see something that was like a like a fracture or something like that yeah. coming out or and blood spewing out or when his face hit the uh, the ground where it broke and then you see blood there so um the but the violence was still there when it was needed and i really enjoyed that yeah so my number one is the assault on on the castle that assault on red skull's castle there at the end uh i love that it's it's a you know it's a completely different kind of scene from the movie or there's a similar scene in the movie but it's it's really different and of course the whole plan is completely different the red skull is doing because he's trying to use the tesseract to draw in some huge creature but i love that the moment it the creature comes out he just gets squished and start goes whoa you know I thought that was great. And uh, the discovery of, again, you've already talked about it, Steve being alive and getting back in the suit. I, I loved it. It made me cheer, man. And because I just, I love the chance. I love the fact that he got to be a hero, but I also understand yeah. your point from earlier. I love when Peggy grabbed the sword and started cutting it up. And then at the end, of course, when she comes out, she's still got the sword in her hand. Seeing Steve and Peggy fighting, you know, side by side again was, was just really, really cool. And, you know, of course, until his battery runs out, but. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, this, there was just enough humor. It's one of the things that I've said before that Marvel does really well is mixing the 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 humor with the the drama. They do. And did you see the comparison between like Wonder Woman and Captain Carter with the shield and the sword at that point? Oh, that's it. I know. I didn't even. It didn't yeah. even dawn that was on me. The but you're right. Thing I thought of, and I'm like, you're oh, right. Is this like trying to say Black Knight because? 
for the longest time, the MCU has been trying to incorporate the Black Knight, but we have not. We've only heard, like, we've already spoke about this in previous podcasts when we were talking about the uh, the movies. But with this one, it kind of gave me a reminiscent of Wonder Woman because, and what was it, Batman versus Superman? Mm-hmm. Wonder Woman comes out, she has a sword and a shield. So now Peggy, as Captain Carter, has a sword and a shield. And she comes out even after through that uh, that warp or whatever that time warp was mm-hmm. in present day. And she still has it. So I'm wondering yeah. if that's going to be a continuous thing. That'd be cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> All right. Um, that leads me to my number one. That would be the ending where we get Captain Carter show up in front of Fury and Hawkeye coming out of the time warp. But it, it's basically present time or the time when Cap in the original or, or originally came out within New York. You know, he was thought out. But in this case, Peggy kind of worked in. Mm-hmm. But almost like Loki did from the original Avengers film because they were using the Tesseract. Right. Right. Yeah. Very cool. Gosh, we have covered just about everything. The only thing that I have to tack on to that in scene is it is Clint like a World War II buff or something? Because how would he instantly know who she was? Exactly. That's like, a good question. I was like, as soon as I heard him ask the, make that in the second time, I didn't notice the first watch, but in the second watch, yeah. when I heard him say, um, <laughs> that's Captain Carter. I was like, how does he know who Captain Carter well, is? Well, maybe like, they had, you know, baseball cards. Like uh, with uh, who this? knows? Yeah, it was just From one of those Agents things. Agents of Shield. Just, He's like, I yeah, got cards. It, okay, yeah, Captain Carter. It was just one of those things that just kind of, kind of made me go, huh? But it was all good. It's um, still good. I, yeah, I think everything else in my oh, the only other thing I have in my notes that we haven't covered is I there was there's a lot of stuff they did that because it's animated. Mm-hmm. They were able to do it, and I didn't. I didn't like disbelieve it. I didn't totally uh, yeah. take it out of out of the realm. But like, I'll compare it to the Black Widow movie when Black Widow in the movie is jumping from piece to piece of falling. She's falling out of the sky. We're like, okay, I've got to suspend my disbelief here for a minute. Yeah, I know for her being able to do that. But when I see Captain Carter do it in in an animated form, I'm like, oh yeah, she's a superhero. She's got she can do that, you know. And so. But it was, it just was, it was a lot, it just was a lot better. And there's a lot of things they're able to do because it was animated that you wouldn't necessarily see in a live action movie. Yeah. They got away with a lot. <laughs> yeah. 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 A note that I have really from the show, I really enjoyed the consistent like flirtation between Steve and Peggy. It still is mm-hmm. there, but always referencing dancing and finding the right partner. I, I just really enjoyed that. And I, I love that Bradley Whitford was uh, in this, and I love that they changed it to be an imposing character for Peggy. So in Captain America, the first uh, Avenger, it was Chester Will- uh, Phillips, not right. Chester Tommy Williams. Lee Jones. Yeah, Tommy <laughs> Lee Jones. But apparently uh, Phillips was killed in the bombing during the procedure. So that character in the movie always backed up Peggy in the original Captain America film. Mm-hmm. But Whitford's character, Flynn, becomes Peggy's military opponent within the story, whereas Phillips was that to Steve in the movie Mm -hmm. itself. And I thought that was pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. So we've got some quotes. Yep. You want to start? Sure. Uh, My first one, I only have a couple. So uh, I love when Stark said, I push the buttons. I'm I'm the buttons guy. And that's kind of a running at the very end. They have that same kind of running... uh, kind of gag when she, when he says, oh, I've got to push the buttons, you know, and she's like, well, help me over here. He's like, no, I've got to push the buttons. And she's like, oh, are you having trouble pushing the buttons? So it was just like <laughs> the whole buttons thing just, just got me, especially in the second watch. Yeah, I got you. Uh, my first one would be, this is nice. Do you mind if I have a go? And that's Captain Carter to the Nazi, to the motorcycle rider, or <laughs> and, yeah. and knocking him off at the same time and then taking over. <laughs> My only other one is I, I'm usually a bit more covert that when she's attacking that first convoy of Germans, when she gets the Tesseract, I thought it was just because she's like, she's always been like the secret agent, you know, the spy kind of thing, not out in the field. And so that her idea of fighting it was really good. So that's like, I just love that. I, I'm usually more covert. <laughs> that's pretty cool. 
Uh, she was also learning at that point, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So uh, my next one would be Peggy saying, did it work? And Stark goes, and then some. You won't be needing he- those heels anymore. <laughs> and if you look at her, she was always tall. Mm-hmm. Taller than Steve because she was a tall woman. Right. And Steve was a very short guy. But they just gave her a little bit of mass, like muscle mm-hmm. tone and everything else. So I really yeah, they, enjoyed they, that they, aspect about that. Yeah, I love the fact they kind of beefed her up just enough to where it wasn't unattractive. Yeah. But it was it, – it, it was it wasn't – and it wasn't so dramatic of a difference as like what Steve's was when he went from skinny to Chris Evans. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, next up would be Dum Dum Dugan saying, since when dames fight like that? And then she kind of launches a shield and does all and, and hits a couple of Nazi operatives. And she goes, Oh, since today, I guess. And then, you know, then Peggy breaks out the Howling Commandos out of the prison. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, last one for me would be Steve saying, Stark gave me some dancing shoes. What do you think? And Peggy replies, Well, let's start dancing. And that's during the breakout of the prison fight. So they start like, destroying everything at, after they get out of the prison. I thought that was pretty cute. Yeah. So. So we didn't get any feedback. No. Nah. And I just removed the news was old news. Yeah, it's old news. So <laughs> I didn't really see anything come up this week. Significant. Do you recall hearing anything besides the fact that, that there may be a season two of what if? Yes. I, I, I heard speculations about it. I can't confirm. Mm-hmm. But um, there's also um, some chatter about Chadwick Boseman being on other What If episodes as well as being a voice character, but I can't confirm. But I look forward to because this is the last that we'll get out of uh, Chadwick Boseman and, you know, uh, the last of T'Challa that we know. And I really am looking forward to that particular episode, too. So we should move on to podcast recommendations. Sure. Uh, we've already been talking about it, and I've already mentioned uh, that TV <laughs> Podcast Industries obviously is covering What If. You and I have already talked about the fact that how, or not on this podcast, but previously House Podcastica, a Podcastica podcast, is is covering What If as well. So Correct. there's lots of places for you guys to go out there and hear our friends talk about What If. And Strange Indeed is back with their coverage of Sweet Tooth, the Correct. Netflix series, which I'm really enjoying them talking about those episodes as well. Yeah, I, I highly recommend uh, check out TV Podcast Industries and House Podcast uh, as they cover What If. They will have a different take than what we have, and I highly recommend it. You know, I like to listen to other people that have different takes, uh, especially YouTubers or Everything Always, all these other places that are out there. And I just love hearing everybody's thoughts. And I suggest the same to you because it's always fun because, you know, everybody has a different idea or opinion about something and you take away a little bit that's something different from everybody's point of view of that particular show. Well, for me, for my podcast recommendation, I would say, did you get my text with Meredith Salinger and Pat Oswalt? And that's a, uh, a fun time you know, them talking about stuff that they text to and from one another throughout the week. And they have a good time doing it. And it's a fairly new podcast, but they are very well known. You know, Meredith Salinger, you know, Natty Gann. She was in Dream a Little Dream. She was in uh, Village of the Damned. And, you know, Pat Oswalt as his comedic stuff, as well as in King of Queens. He's been in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., He's also been in MODOK, which we have not covered, but we should do mm-hmm. like a overall thought about MODOK because I thought it was cute. But I've got to finish. I've got to finish that one. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. So I would suggest uh, you check out their podcast, which is Did You Get My Text? And for YouTube recommendations, uh, I would say Sean and Chris with their YouTube channel, The Thing with Two Heads. So they did something in Chicago recently and they posted it. And it was like the first big thing that they did together. They were able to uh, have like a little panel and apparently they had a good time with it. And also they were able to play the Halloween pinball machine. And I'm really jealous because both of them 
bought it <laughs> and it's expensive as hell but um also the uh, original michael myers himself played it and you could see it on the video as well so i i suggest checking them out and checking that youtube channel very cool yep so as always we can be heard on any of your podcast players of choice spotify google play apple podcasts amazon whatever podcast player you decide to to listen to us on is your favorite or just the one that you use go ahead and, and hook us up on there subscribe to us give us a review if you would like uh, you can also check out our website which is panels to pixels podcast.com you can submit your theories and feedback to our facebook group which is just facebook.com slash panels to pixels we have an email address, which is panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one, the TO spelled out right there in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. We are also on YouTube as the panels, panels to pixels podcast. So give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel there and check us out. Next week, we will be back with the second episode of What If. Correct. <laughs> and where else can listeners hear us? Well, I can be heard on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast and the Parkour Entertainment Network, and we cover action films, adventure films, thriller films, and suspense films. So, after you hear this particular episode, you'll probably be hearing me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast with my friend Jerry, and we're going to be covering Planet of the Apes from 1968 Ooh, with Mr. Charlton one. Heston. So, check that out when it's available. And uh, leave your comments there if you can. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, me, I send voicemails to various friends of our friends, podcasts, and others, uh, other podcasts that I that I listen to that that take voicemails. Uh, hopefully, I have I will be on the Wilhelm. Wilhelm, thank you. I just blanked. Um, <laughs> uh, ben and I are are trying to schedule a time next week to to talk about war movies, uh, American badasses, or war movies. So. Uh, check us out from that or be looking for that in the coming weeks awesome well that was our coverage and that was our episode 156 of panels to pixels and our coverage of what if captain carter so i just want to thank everybody for listening i'm mark and i'm steve and this was panels to pixels and we'll see you on the next panel good night everybody good night